Hello and welcome to Gladys Cake Kitchen. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful two-tier cake complete with a textured fondant marble stone effect. Decorated with flowers and presented beautifully on a fondant covered board, you will learn how to prepare this cake by first covering it in ganache before layering with fondant. Setting the floral decorations including a palm leaf is beginner friendly, so if you're up for learning some new cake decorating tips and tricks, let's jump right into it. I am starting with a 5 inch cake unevenly layered, it will be brought to perfect shape later. In the meantime, it is shifted into place and wrapped in cling film to chill before work starts on it. Wrapping the cake in cling film helps to trap in moisture when refrigerated and also helps to keep the layers aligned. While the 5 inch cake is set to chill, work starts on the 6 inch bottom tier of this 2 tier cake. Having already filled and layered the cake, it was set to chill and now ready to be trimmed. Trimming helps to rid of the cake crust and evens out the surface and leaves a clean slice when the cake is cut into. During trimming, a gap is left between the cake card underneath the cake, which is a perfect space to be filled with ganache or buttercream. <laughs> With the 6 inch bottom tier trimmed clean, the 5 inch is brought back to be trimmed too, leaving both cakes ready to be covered in ganache. Next, I am covering the 6 inch cake with layers of ganache and unlike a light layer of ganache used to crumb coat a cake first before subsequent layers are added, the single round heavy layer serves to lock in the crumbs whilst covering the cake simultaneously. This is a quick step to frosting cakes which merges the crumb coating process and polishing phases. I have done this simply because the cake will be covered in fondant hence I'm not looking for a cleanly polished ganache surface. The excess ganache gathered on top of the cake is left to chill and trimmed later with a knife dipped in hot water. This is my quick tip for achieving sharp edges on a cake. With the 6 inch cake done and out of the way, the 5 inch tier is ganached using a slightly different technique. This is because with the cake initially unevenly layered, a bit of work has to be done before a perfect looking cake is achieved. Starting with some ganache on top of the cake, it is spread flat and a cake card wrapped in plastic is placed on the cake. I have a full video dedicated to this method linked below for you in the description box so please do check that out. Fixing the cake card in place, any excess ganache is removed whilst ensuring the top and bottom cards are aligned. A spirit level is used to check for a level top and the ganache applied to cover the cake. Like the 6 inch before, heavy layers of ganache are applied to cover this cake completely before any excess is removed using a scraper. Gaps of air pocket are filled out and the surface polished off for a clean looking cake. The cake card wrapped in plastic is removed after the cake has been left to chill for 15 minutes and any excess ganache hanging on top of the lip is shaved off. The top is filled with a layer of ganache to even it out and polished with a warm scraper for a sharp edged polished cake. The cake is now done and transferred from the initial work surface to another cake board setting it ready for fondant covering. With both cakes covered in ganache, they are left to chill before butter is rubbed on the surface to serve as glue to hold the fondant. In place of butter, spritz of water or trex, also known as Crisco, can be used. The cakes are set aside and the fondant prepared for covering. For the textured fondant marble effect, I have some dry fondant in different shades of pink and white. Into this, I have added freshly kneaded white fondant. Both of them are lightly kneaded together and rolled onto a lightly dusted work surface. The dry fondant causes textures to be formed, making the rolled out fondant imperfect looking. And that's exactly the goal. The rolled up fondant is placed on top of the 5 inch cake which is then flipped upside down and any hanging fondant trimmed with a sharp blade. The cake is then turned fondant side up and set aside. The leftover fondant is gathered together and rolled to cover the rest of the cake. While rolling, the height and circumference of the cake are measured and the fondant cut to size accordingly.
The cake is now covered with the textured fondant, which has intentional tears created to enhance their textures. A fondant smoother used with Flexi Smoother are employed for polishing the cake. For final touches, a fondant ball is used to finish polishing of the cakes and the cakes are done, ready to be tiered. Our cakes are ready and the 6 inch cake is transferred onto a fondant covered board using ganache as glue. A 5 inch cake card is used to measure the placement of the top tier cake. With the card, a mark is made on top of the 6 inch cake and a dowel set in the middle which is then marked and cut to the measured height. Four additional dowels measuring the same height are inserted into the cake to bear the weight of the top tier cake. With a light layer of ganache's glue, the 5 inch cake is placed on top of the 6 inch to sit flush on the dowels. If necessary, the cake is shifted into place carefully and we have a perfectly tiered 2 tier cake ready for decoration. For decorative elements, I am using a simple palm leaf and artificial flowers sourced from Etsy. These are some pink peonies and a selection of green foliage. I am creating a barrier using a fondant ball into which the flowers are inserted. This makes for convenience as the flowers do not poke into the cake. The same is done for the floral arrangement on the bottom side. With a small brush, the cake is painted tracing along the cracks of the fondant and marble lines. There is no rhyme or rhythm to this except I risked some crooked lines with my very shaky hands and had to stop painting. Our two-tier fondant cake is done and beautifully presented as a textured fondant cake with marble stone effect. This cake was rather simple to make and with imperfections forming part of the character of the cake, it is completely beginner friendly and easy to make as a DIY cake project at home. The video on the screen offers you more beginner friendly tips to achieving sharp edges on a cake and there's more helpful videos linked below in the description box for you. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.